Hey guys, Jonas here from Edge Alert Up. So day two of the seven day accelerator and today we're gonna to look at bookies from two perspectives. One is the bookie landscape in Australia in terms of ownership um, and in terms of the um, desirability, I guess, of them for us when we're using this system. And the second thing we're gonna look at with them is how they price, price markets and, and just generally make money. So I've split the, the, the key bookies into three tiers uh, based on the promotions available and also how quick or slow they are to promotion ban. So in tier one, we've got Sportsbet. Most people are familiar with them and they've, they've got a range of amazing promos just pretty much daily. Um, they are very slow to promotion ban. Um, they're owned by a big conglomerate from Ireland called Flutter Entertainment who also own um, Betfair, which is an exchange that I've listed down the bottom. They're not a traditional bookie, but they're an exchange. So um, it's somewhat interesting to know that they have the same owner. Um, for the purists, it's a bit annoying that, to know that um, an exchange is not truly independent, but instead is owned by by a, a powerhouse like Sportsbet. But there's been nothing really that's come out that suggested that um, they're using the information from Betfair to to profile clients on on Sportsbet or do anything tricky like that. So so far it's been okay. The second tier one bookies, Bet three six five, their promos aren't as good as what the Tab and Sportsbet offer. However, they're extremely slow to promo ban. They're just owned by a rich rich family in uh, in the UK. Um, most people will know here that I, I used to work for that company. The tab finally, they've really stepped up their promotions in the last year. I, I think they're just chasing the sports bet customer. Um, so they've got great promos. They're also slow to promo and ban and, and they're Aussie owned. So they're the, the real key, uh, the bookmakers to take advantage of. And I, I deem them tier one here. Tier two, so Ladbrokes and Neds, same owner. Both of them are basically very similar promotions uh, offerings if you if you have a look at look at them and just compare them um, but their own so Neds is owned by Ladsbroke Ladbrokes and that's a key thing to to know there what I suggest is um, opening up both accounts not on the same day maybe a week apart and just sort of dabbling between the two have some Ladbrokes bets one week and have some Neds bets the next week Instead, the, the biggest mistake you can make there is just literally opening up the accounts within five minutes of each other and just instantly hammering them both on the same promotions. So that's a really important thing to know, that ownership there. Uh, the, the last tier two bookie, the hit points bet. So their promotions are really good with their early payouts and their racing promos going back to forth. However, they're extremely quick to promo ban. So the way you want to play that is uh, just go easy on them initially in that first few weeks. Um, go even easier than you would on other bookies. So by that I mean de deposit some money, have a few non-promo bets, have some promo bets, use the other bookmakers to, to get on most of your racing bets, then you know come back into points bet, have some more there, uh, and just really ease into them. If they send you an email saying you're betting too much on promos and you may get promo banned, what I suggest there is just hammering them completely for a day or two because if you get that warning email you're 99% done anyway so you might as well go for your last hurrah t3 elite bet and bet deluxe these are smaller aussie shops um they've kind of come out of nowhere really but they're offering some really good racing promos so with these uh, the keys to know elite bet you really need to warm that account up they don't let you start hammering promos straight off the bat and by warm up i mean you need to id yourself have some non-promo bets and just sort of hang, you know hang around for for a week maybe even two weeks uh, and then you will very likely get an email saying hey you've got access to to dozens of racing promos up to a hundred dollars every week so that's the trick there bet deluxe they've really come out of nowhere as well and um, their racing promos are very good as in the, the volume is very high their pricing on racing we need to be a bit more selective with them. They do have a lot more margin in their racing books, uh, but there's still plenty of value there. The the race the, the, sorry their sport product is is diabolical. Um, the pricing is um, on most sports that aren't line bets um, is, is quite bad. So promo so so bonus bet turnover is quite a bit trickier on bet deluxe, uh, which is why we recommend using all bet deluxe bonus bets on the racing tips. 
Uh, and then finally on the bottom here, which I sort of touched on earlier, it's Betfair, the exchange. They're owned by the same group that owns Sportsbet. All right, so moving on to how bookies make money. Uh, most most people watching this will have some idea. Um, some will have a, a very good idea. But I'll go through the sort of the core basics here um, just so that everyone's up to speed on that. So ultimately, it's about margin. So if there's a 50-50 coin flip, for example, the true odds are $2, $2, but you'll never see $2, $2 unless it's a, a promotion with the bookies. There, are, So they're often $1.90, $1.90. Um, and if you're betting on a dollar ninety, dollar ninety, say you have a hundred bucks on both sides, you're guaranteeing yourself a hundred and ninety uh, return. So you've lost ten dollars out of that two hundred. So you've locked in a five percent loss, and that's that five percent uh, that the bookmakers earn. Now they don't know the true odds, so sometimes they'll be off, and there might be edge in our favour. But the five percent is a, a fairly decent house edge, if you like, for a two-way market. So. The way you calculate the um, the amount of margin bookies have in their books is you take the inverse of the prices you add them up. So I've got an example here in the in a racing event. So if we take, I've just inputted the tabs prices in over here into just into Excel here and inverse. I've just gone one divided by the price. We add them up and we get one hundred and seventeen percent. So in this instance, the tab is betting a book that is a hundred that has seventeen percent of margin against. The book make, uh, sorry, against the better. So that's a significant amount of margin, especially for such a small field here. Um, what's interesting to know here is in this example in particular, if we if we break it down, that hunt that seventeen percent of margin, it's not it's not equally weighted across all runners. And so what the bookies will often do is they will have the greatest amount of that margin in those runners that they think the bat, the, the betters are just going to bet on at any price. So in, in this instance, it's a pretty well-known um, well known fact that the bookmakers keep the, the favourites artificially short because they know that everyone's just going to back them at any price anyway. And this is a perfect example of that, this number four hand spun. The bookmakers across the board, they're 240, 250, 260 tops uh, when the true price is more like 315. And they do this all day long in racing. They'll hold the the, the runners that they think they're going to lay and, that, and they are laying just short. And then in that last minute, they'll move them somewhere towards fair value. But um, sometimes they don't even get anywhere near that. And this kind of loops back into what the racing model does it identifies this sort of shocking value 240 shot um, by looking at the price fluctuations across all bookies and betfair looks at volume and it'll snipe the value so in this instance it might be close to getting a signal on the number one here man of peace if if there's a bit more of a firm there across other bookies and um, betfair you might get a signal there to, to, to back man of peace so so that so we've gone through margin on a dollar ninety dollar ninety uh, example um, how that works in a horse race where you've got greater than two runners um, skewness this is really that what I just mentioned there about artificially holding certain runners short um, so they're skewing their pricing uh, according to the flow and just quickly on fixed versus tote racing fixed odds are, are literally odds that um, you back and you know what price you got tote products are are basically the, the price is unknown until all the money is in the pool and then you get to know what price you actually backed. I strongly recommend, unless it's some sort of great promotion and I, I don't think I've seen one yet, I'd strongly recommend staying away from tote racing. There are syndicates out there that um, make a lot of money from tote racing and they'll manipulate the pools. They've got all sorts of edge over the recreational better. So I'd strongly recommend uh, staying away from, from those. Um, what else? Finally, a couple other points. So the volume of betting in that last five minutes is approximately 90% of all the, of the total volume on a race. So if you're ever doing any sort of odds comparison on racing, just make sure you're aware of that. You might look at a race an hour out and it might not look so appealing. But in that last five minutes, the bookies, they get, there are a few things and a few dynamics that happen. One, they get a bit more confident on the price because more bets have come in and they've sort of been able to sort of just massage their market around that. And 
And, and two, there's more volume in Betfair, so they, they get a little bit more comfortable there as, as far as knowing the true price. And because of those factors, they reduce the margin in their books, um, which makes that last minute a very good time for us to bet. Uh, what else? The f yeah, I think the final point I'd make here is we look at all these bookies here, and that's not all of them, and that's just what's been fed into this odds comparison tool for now. But the tab is an interesting one in that they've got their betting shops around, and they can they actually do take anonymous money. So by that I mean you can go in there and just start sticking fifty dollar notes into a machine and just smash something and get your cash payout and walk away and the tab doesn't know who you are. So what, what that actually means is the tab cannot cut all their customers. So, and then what the significance of that is, in racing a lot of the time there are there's inside information, you can call it fixed racing uh, at, at its extreme, whatever you wanna call it, the, the tab takes anonymous money, therefore price moves at the tab in those last few minutes have some great predictive value. So it's it's nice to, to monitor them as well as far as what they're doing in those last few minutes uh, and factor that into your, into the, the probability assessment of a, a horse. Cool, so that's, um, that's it for day two. Just quickly previewing day three. So on day one, we went through opening up new accounts to take advantage of those first deposit bonuses. So we're gonna check in on that and see what's been, what's been offered and how to go about that. Uh, we're gonna talk a lot about promo account sustainability. The longer term members of the system will know the key principles here, but these are very important to know when we're, uh, when we're applying this system over a longer period of time. If you're just going in for a quick in a cash grab for a week, you don't have to worry about this. Um, but most most members find it useful to milk this system over many many months and to significantly increase the lifetime value of your accounts as opposed to just going for the quick cash grab in a week or two and then getting out of there. But look, each to their own. Uh, then we're going to go through. So when I worked at three six five, I I worked on assessing and, and profiling clients to some degree. So I've got a good idea of kind of how the bookmakers on that side look at new accounts. So uh, there are some pretty simple principles, but important principles that you can follow that really help with um, staying on the right side of that profiling. Uh, and then we're gonna go into just having your first bets and how to get the thing, get things rolling. Cool, so that's it for today. If you've got any questions, um, I'm most contactable on Telegram on that handle there, or you can email through um, into that email address. Cheers.